The title of my sermon is Marie the Scientist, and I preached this on June the 28th, 2020, at the Drive-In Church at Prospect, and then inside at Trinity and Asbury United Methodist Churches in Harrington, Delaware. My name is the Reverend Dr. Lawrence Jameson. Now, in the month of June, I feel led to lift up some biographical sermons, and I'm asking the question, who do we look up to? You know, I found some research that showed that the most trusted professions in the world are teachers, doctors, and scientists. So I alternated women and men and picked one person from each of those three professions. Now, before I begin my sermon, I want to say something to each and every one of, of you people uh, at uh, Prospect, Trinity, and Asbury United Methodist Churches. I want to thank you for your kindness to me and Sue, because I am so grateful for the honor of being your pastor and for being appointed to serve this community as a United Methodist clergy person. You know, today is the last Sunday of our ninth year under appointment at Harrington, and it's the, um, the last day of the second full year uh, for our appointment at Prospect and Trinity. And so this is quite a, a great, day for us, and we appreciate uh, your kindness to us. You know, I've never been anywhere that long before, <laughs> and I want you to know that I appreciate all the support that you've given us, and it is the grace of God and your generosity that has made this possible for us, and Sue and I would like to serve for a couple more years before we retire, and I, we hope we can stay and work with you to dream and to vision and to seek God's will together. So in Colossians 1.15, the Bible says, The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in Him all things were created, things in heaven and things on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through Him and for Him. End quote. Now as Christians, we believe that everything Everything in the universe, all matter and energy, space and time was created through Jesus and for Jesus. Now, of course, we cannot scientifically prove that, but we believe it is true because we believe that the Bible has uh, been given to us by God to reveal mysteries to us. And one of those mysteries is uh, the purpose of all creation. Christians are explorers. You know, we seek for the truth. We seek for knowledge. And we share that in common with uh, scientists and anyone who is involved in the scientific process. You know, there does not need to be any conflict between faith and science because we believe that as we learn more about the universe, we're learning about the wonders that God has created. Now, that approach worked for the Apostle Paul in the first century, and it is still working in the 21st century. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about Marie Sklodowska. She was born in Warsaw, Poland on Thursday, November the 7th, 1867. Her parents were both respected teachers. Her father was an atheist and her mother was a devout Catholic, and Marie kind of hit halfway between those extremes. She was an agnostic for her whole life. Now, you might ask the question, why would I look up to or even talk about a woman who did not believe in God? Well, first off, she was a great person whose life has directly improved your life and mine. For that alone, she deserves our respect and appreciation. You know, if the only people that we can look up to are Christians, then we're going to be living very narrow lives. Christians have nothing to lose when we accept people for who they are, because that's what Jesus did. We follow his example. Now, Jesus died for everyone. It is our job to show respect where it is due and to love people the best that we can in the name of Jesus. We don't ignore sin or failure because we know that everyone has sinned. We don't ignore achievement either, because excellence is always worth looking up to. In John chapter 8, verse 32, Jesus said, You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Well, dear ones, Christians are committed to the truth. Marie was born into an oppressed and occupied country. You know, the Russian Empire controlled Poland at that time. 
Marie's family resisted the Russian occupation, and every day she walked by a Russian monument. She spat on it, and so did her parents, her grandparents, and her great-grandparents. You know, everybody did in that family. We don't have that problem here in Delaware. You know, we're just coming up now on the 4th of July. It's coming soon, and we have a lot to thank God for. You know, we have a country in which uh, we can worship the Lord in freedom, and we have opportunities, and we have um, our whole lives ahead of us, and we're not worried about an, an invading power coming in and telling us what to do. Marie was not allowed to go to college in Poland because she was a woman. <laughs> we now know that that was crazy. You know, any country that prevents anyone from learning is just hurting themselves because everyone has the potential to make this world a better place. Marie learned all that she could under the circumstances. Her parents taught her and she studied at home. She and her uh, sister made a pact when uh, her sister was going to go to an underground school, uh, which was past the public school, and she did for several years, and Marie uh, supported her. And then the tables turned, it was time for her sister to uh, make it possible for Marie to study. Well, Marie by that time was 24 years old, and she got the opportunity to go to France and attend the University of Paris. Well, she jumped at the chance. Now, she, she didn't fit in because she was older than the other students. Also, she was poor, she had to work uh, really hard just to make ends meet. Uh, she barely had enough food to feed herself, and so she was a scrawny student, but she was also a brilliant student, and soon she became one of the world's greatest scientists. Now, I'm not going to tell you her complete story. I just want to say here that you would do well to look up the story of Marie Curie, uh, look it up on w Wikipedia, or look it up uh, just Google this name and read the stories about this woman. It's incredible. Now, Marie Sklodowska Curie became the first woman to win a Nobel Prize. She was also the first person to win two Nobel Prizes in different scientific fields, and hers were physics and chemistry. She was the first woman to become a professor at the University of Paris, and she was a World War I hero because she uh, recruited an, a, a large number of nurses and women to um, take these portable x-ray machines to the front. And historians say that just by organizing these x-ray machines, she probably saved about a million lives. Now, she not only discovered the elements of polonium and radium and added to um, the, the known number of elements in the world, but she also discovered radioactivity. She coined the word radioactivity. Dear ones, we have the field of subatomic physics today due in large part to the efforts of Marie Curie. And one more thing, <laughs> she did all of this and had a happy marriage and was a loving mother of two. So how can we apply some of the values that we have heard about in the sermon to our everyday lives? Well, I have a couple of points. Number one, I think that we need to acknowledge that we have grown up in a crazy world that has oppressed women, oppressed people of color, and disrespected and misused a lot of people in our so-called civilized history. You know, it's people like Jesus, uh, Savvy Tree by Poo Lee, and Luke the physician, and, and Marie Curie, that proved to us over and over that excellence and character come from unexpected places. It doesn't matter what country you came from, or if you were different. God uses our differences to bless us. Now, that idea needs to trickle down into the way we approach our relationships with each other and the way we do ministry together as a church. This world is often crazy bigoted, and we need to stand with Jesus and not accept the values of this world. Instead, we just accept people as they are. There's a beautiful hymn in our hymnal that says, Just as I am, without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, 
and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. I love that hymn. It talks about the quality that Jesus has to accept everyone, and we should emulate that quality. The second thing I'd like to share with you is that we are surrounded by amazing people and people that we can look up to. You know, there's never been a better time in history to be inspired and encouraged than right now because there's lots of people doing wonderful things in this world today. You know, if nobody is inspiring you just now, look around. God is at work in this world. He will show you somebody. Not somebody perfect and not somebody without sin because uh, all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But there are lots of people who are making a difference and you can look up to them. I'd like to say a prayer for you. Dear Lord Jesus, we need inspiration because this world is crazy bigoted. Please show us some good examples of people who are making a difference in this world. By your grace, help us to see something that nobody else has ever seen before. Open our eyes to the glorious beauty that you created in this universe. Lord, the world you've made us, it's, it's like a love letter that uh, we get to open the envelope. We get to unfold the letter and read it because every single detail is an expression of your love to us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening to this sermon.